You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. A super smiley adventure is brought to you by State Farm. I'm Smiley the dog. I am a mutt. I'm Smiley the dog. I'm super smiley. I am a cat too sweet to travel kitty. I'm a good girlfriend and she's really pretty. I have a pony and we share a big horse. We have a big yard. Yeah, we have to, of course. I have a pool. In the summer, I stay cool. Do a fountain, live in the mountain, live high on the hump. Need to be a smoke dog. I'm Smiley the dog. Woof and Super Smiles, welcome to a Super Smiley adventure on Pet Life Radio, the largest pet radio network in the world. I'm Megan Blake, the Pet Lifestyle Coach, here with my possum co-host, two-time shelter dog, Super Smiley, the ambassador of kindness for State Farm, who is our wonderful national sponsor. As the Pet Lifestyle Coach, I travel the country with Smiley, helping people adopt the right pet for their lifestyle, then help train them so they keep that pet forever. And here on a Super Smiley Adventure, we explore adventures where animals lead. These can be adventures for fun or missions of animal advocacy or inner journeys of self-discovery where our pets can become our healers and our teachers. And today we're hosting a super show because we have four guests who are out there in a big way sharing the message of peace, joy, and love given to us by the big doggies known as the bully breeds and including the pit bulls. And we also have some great holiday and Christmas tips for everybody too. So we've got some pit bull fans with us today along with a kitty cat story about a super docile older house kitty that actually created a life-threatening danger that may rival any bully breed dog. And all of these super possum guests are with State Farm, which does so much to advocate for pets and their people. So our wonderful pet loving guests are all here with us today. So first, let's welcome Heather Paul. Heather is State Farm's public affairs specialist. She's joined us on several Super Smiley Adventures. She works with State Farm's arson dog program, bite prevention education, and with Super Smiley safe pet travel tips and disaster preparedness, kindness, and just so much more. So welcome back, Heather Paul. Thanks, Megan. It's great to be here with you again. (laughs) We're so happy that you're here, Heather. And with Heather, I also want to welcome Adriana Galdemez. Adriana works with State Farm agents across Southern California, focusing on pets in families. And she also penned the amazing article, Championing Bully Breeds, titled All Dog Breeds Deserve a Second Chance. Welcome, Adriana. Hello, welcome. I'm very excited to be with you all. So thank you for having me and our wonderful agents. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So we also want to welcome, speaking of agents, Josh Tarano. Josh is a Riverside, California State Farm agent. He has adopted a beautiful pit bull area. Welcome, Josh. Hi, thank you. Glad to be here. And finally, we want to welcome San Diego State Farm agent Linda Newell. Linda works with kids and pet safety. She partners with vets to share responsible dog care. She works actively with pet adoption events and with Santa Paws. Welcome, everybody. Hi, thank you so much for having us. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and happy Hanukkah to everybody. And so since we're right in the middle of the holidays, I want to find out right away about Santa Paws. But first, Heather, can you quickly give our listeners an overview of why this topic of non-breed specific discrimination is so important to all of us here and to State Farm and maybe why the topic of pets in general is such a passion for State Farm? Absolutely. You know, even from our humble roots in central Illinois, you know, back in, in 1922, it was, it's always been about family, recognizing the importance of keeping families together and protecting families and helping them recover from the unexpected. And certainly one of those family members that's incredibly important to all of us are our pets. Any time that we can, as a company, find ways to interact with all members of the family, and that includes animals, that is a passion point for us. We know that it's important to our policyholders, it's important to our employees, our agents, and potential policyholders as well. So we are very proud to recognize the importance that all dogs, regardless of breed, should be treated as individuals rather than just lumped into one category. And that's why one of the reasons that we do not discriminate based on the breed of dog that is owned. We want to look at the history of each dog rather than what the dog looks like, what size their head is, or what somebody may think that dog is. 
And Heather, you just made some amazing points. They're so fabulous. You said that the dogs are part of the family, and indeed they are, because some people say um, they mean that, but they say that my pets are like my family, and they're not even like our family. They are our family. They're what make up a lot of times the heart of the family. I love that. And also, I want to emphasize to our listeners the significance of what you said with State Farm not implementing breed specific, you know, profiling because many apartments they won't rent to renters if they have a German shepherd or a doberman or a pit bull or any a rottweiler and you all don't do that, do you? That's very significant. No, you know, it's really important and I think that it's a uh, especially there's nobody that's going to be more conserved than an insurance company. We're looking at all angles of what is risk and assessing risk. So, I think that it makes a big bold statement to say, look, when we look at risk, let's look at the individual history and experiences of a dog rather than just what that dog's breed is or what, because there are hundreds of thousands of amazing dogs that never bite anybody, that never appear to be in a dangerous situation. And that's because their owners are responsible. We can't blame the dogs for being a dog. What we can do though, is reinforce the importance of responsibility that the owner has to be responsible for not putting their dog into a dangerous situation that could result in somebody, including the pet, being injured. Absolutely. Again, very well said, Heather. And and later on in the show, we're not going to talk about it now, but you're going to bring us the kitty cats, <laughs> the kitty cat story, which is yes, pretty the great. irony of this. <laughs> the irony of this. Okay. And now, Linda, we've got the holidays here. So again, happy Hanukkah, everyone. Merry Christmas. So now, Linda, tell us about Santa Paws. What are you doing with Santa Paws? Well, Santa Paws and I do a number of events throughout the year, starting in the summer, because there's always oh. that, you know. Christmas in July. Uh, so there's, <laughs> there's various events that we do with rescue groups, um, and we're really busy this time of year doing a number of different events, and we do free photos with Santa Paws. When this. we go out to the rescue events, not only are we taking you know the, the free pictures and having a fantastic time, it, it's so much fun, but we also bring with State Farm's um, activity book, Fido, Friend or Foe. It's a wonderful book. So Santa's not only handing out candy canes, but also handing out the activity book to kids. And it's a great book that State Farm put together. We also use it, or I use it throughout the year. I give it to different schools and such. So it's a book that I order cases and cases of. <laughs> I love that, Linda. And where can we, because all of our listeners are not here in Southern California, where can they find out about the book Fido, Friend or Foe? How can we share that around the country? Is that possible? They can go to their local State Farm agent, tell them they heard about it on your show, and ask their <laughs> agent to get it for them because every agent can order those books. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Everybody, go into your State Farm agent and say, Super Smiley Cincha. How about that? Is that okay, Heather? Can we get a pause up on that one? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. High pause up for that one. <laughs> okay, great. And speaking of big old doggies, Josh. Hey, Josh. Welcome to Super Smiley Adventure. Hi. So I saw your picture of your beautiful Aria. Is that how she says her name? Aria? Tell us about your dog, your beautiful dog. Yes, Aria is, uh, gosh, she's 18 months now. She's a, oh. an American Bulldog Mastiff mix. And uh, we had never owned a dog before, and uh, we decided that we wanted to adopt a dog. So we went down to our local shelter, took the whole family. I have three kids and a wife. Uh-huh. And uh, so w there was a lot of feeling out process going on with, you know, on both sides, with both the animals and the family. And we came across Aria, who at the time was about six months old. She was very timid, but she was a beautiful dog. And when my uh, my youngest son, who was 18 months at the time, uh, walked up to the cage, they both kind of looked at each other a little bit, uh -huh. and they kind of came, came closer to each other and started sniffing each other out. And uh, we were able to take Aria out into the yard. As soon as we let her out of the cage and she got to run around with the kids, we knew right away that she was a perfect fit for our family. Wow. And that is the bottom line always is to get a dog or a cat or a pet that matches your family's lifestyle. And, and Josh, you said y'all had never had a dog before. You went big, huh? You did. We, we, did. we didn't realize. We didn't realize when we first got her because she was, she was just a puppy. She was six oh months old. Oh my gosh. But, oh, that's funny. Uh, 
we saw the size of her paws, and uh-huh. uh, you know, the vet told us, "Yeah, she's going to be a big dog." We had no idea. She's she's <laughs> just a hair under 100 pounds now, and she outweighs just about uh, well, she outweighs all the kids in the family. Almost, <laughs> uh, my wife. So, oh uh, well, that's a beautiful, beautiful story, and I want to invite all of our listeners to come to our show page on Pet Life Radio. Go to a Super Smiley Adventure and click this particular show because I'm going to have a slideshow. We'll have a picture of beautiful Aria there and Santa Paws and all of these great activities that we're talking about. We, we love our slideshows and congratulations, Josh, on Aria and Ariana. I want to hear about your beautifully written article, All Dog Breeds Deserve a Second Chance, right after the break. But first, I heard that you grew up with a Labrador and for me, my animals, my horses, dogs, and cats, they were my most profound teachers when I was a child. They taught me on a level that was just so much deeper than I could learn anyplace else. And did you learn any life lessons from, I think your dog's name was Toby, right? That perhaps you yeah. have, that have actually led you on your missions today. Tell us about Toby. Yeah, absolutely. So Toby was a yellow Labrador and we had Toby since Toby was a puppy. And of course, you know, he was our family dog and was with us for many, many years. And so I think the biggest lesson that Toby taught taught me and I think our whole family was about unconditional love. I mean, mm, our dog yeah. loved us. We loved our dog. And every time, you know, we got home, it was like you can count on Toby to just wag his tail and just be happy <laughs> as a clam to see us. And I think that that's something that I even take, I keep with me, even now that I'm, I'm an adult now and I have my own family, about keeping positive energy in my home. So we love Toby and he'll always have a special place in our heart. Oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful story. And we are going to take a break now, but we're going to be back with holiday and Christmas tips for pet people and more on big dogs and that cat story. (laughs) Coming up right after this break with the State Farm's Heather Paul, Josh Terrano, Adriana Galdamez, and Linda Newell. Smiley, can you wait? Good boy. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Remember when you swore you'd never get married, never have four bedrooms and a minivan, and never have... Twins? We're having twins? And then never happens, and becomes the things you never want to be without. For all the nevers you now want to last forever, State Farm is there to help protect them, with everything from life insurance to college savings and more. And that's the difference between just having insurance and having a State Farm agent. To find a State Farm agent near you, call 1-800-STATE-FARM or visit statefarm.com. Nature at its best is nature at its simplest. At Red Barn, we've kept it simple for 20 years by concentrating on single-ingredient natural dog treats. Because Mother Nature's actually pretty good at this. Bones are just tasty bones. Meat treats are just nourishing meat. It's nature at its simplest. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Natural Treats. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Try our slow-roasted natural meaty bones. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with State Farm's Heather Paul, Josh Terrano, Adriana Galdamez, and Linda Newell. And Heather, again, one of the things we want to share is about how pit bulls can be gentle giants. Can you talk a little bit about your work with them? Well, you know, I have always, of course, I grew up on a farm in Iowa, so uh-huh. we had dogs. Yeah. Uh, that, no shortage of that. And I've always got along fantastic with all dogs. And in particular, I got to know a good friend of yours as well as mine, Ellie the Pitbull, yes. uh, with Leah Brewer. Yes, and let me just say, Love. Ellie's been a guest on our show many, many times. So big shout out to Ellie the Pitbull and Leah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> love, love Leah. I love Ellie so much. I mean, what a, an amazing dog being not only a tremendous ambassador to the breed of, you know, Pitbull and Bully type breeds, but, you know, even more, she, Leah is an exemplary, responsible owner. She knows when she's out and about and if Ellie is kind of tired of meeting and greeting people that she's like, she's not afraid to say, let's take a break. Yes. And she also does a tremendous job of 
teaching how kids should appropriately approach any dog, regardless yes. of breed. You know, every pit bull, I worked at a veterinary hospital for five years before I started working at State Farm. And I can tell you that we had so many pit bulls that came in that were just phenomenal. They were big, sweet cuddle bugs. And at the bottom line is they are a strong dog. And so it takes a strong owner. It also takes a lot of responsibility. It's yes. not a dog that you can just put into the backyard and not interact with them or inter have that dog interact with the community, people right. around you on an inconsistent basis. They can, just like any dog, though, they would make fantastic pets. You just have to be responsible with them. And so I think what is, what is most important is not to be afraid of bully breeds or large mm -hmm. dogs like that. Yes. Be cautious like you would with any dog. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. That's just so well said, Heather. Thank you so much for sharing with the big old doggies because everybody knows Smiley is a big old dog too. And our other dog is Angel and she's a German shepherd and she's pretty massive. And, and they're both therapy dogs, crisis response dogs. And like you said, we, we know Ellie. Smiley is Ellie's friend and it's just wonderful. And what I was going to say is that pit bulls were the original nanny dogs. That's the dog that was on the, the old, old black and white television series, Little Rascals, all the little kids running around the neighborhood, Little Rascals schools and their cute little doggy was actually a pit bull and the original RCA Victor dog when they had record players that was a pit bull and the the dog of the Marine Corps the because of his loyal heart and just his how much he loved people and his relationship with people that was a pit bull so big shout out to these doggies and speaking of this Adriana tell us what you learned in riding all dog breeds deserve a second chance this was your piece tell us what you learned while you were creating that Sure. So I um, had the privilege to write a story and I, and we titled it All Dog Breeds Deserve a Chance because uh -huh. I feel like that, that message just resonates not only for dogs, but like for humans as well in terms of not judging people on what they look like on the outside and, and giving every person a chance, you know. And so we drafted the story. And so what it is, is people can go on to um, statefarm.com and, and it's in the newsroom. So it, it's a story that features local agents. And so I wanted to showcase them not, as, not only as responsible and as resourceful and very helpful folks that are in the community and um, serving their customers every day, but also as personal dog owners themselves. And so it was just really interesting and a great experience to talk to them. It was a lot of fun too, learning a little bit more about them, um, learning about their dogs that are a, a huge part of their family. In the story, they included some safety tips for people. And it was interesting that as I was talking to the to the pet owners, it was it was very um personal because it's things that I didn't really even know. I didn't really think about very much, you know. It was a uh, very eye opening and so I appreciated them being so candid and sharing their um their safety tips and, and sharing a little insight about their family. So it was fantastic and it was a great privilege. Do you remember one of the safety tips? Can you share one with us here? Definitely, yeah. So one of the uh, agents shared about the retractable leashes. You know, I see those retractable leashes a lot, you know, because I, I love to run and I'm always outdoors. So I see people walking with the retractable leashes often. And so one of the tips was that, you know, if you're approaching a dog and they're with a retractable leash, you know, a lot of times it's so easy. Like, let's say somebody lets the leash go. Um, it's easy to, if the pet comes near you, to just pet them because it's just a lot of pets can be very friendly. And so so one of the tips was to just kind of stop and ask the owner first, say, hey, is it okay if I pet your dog? Or one of the other tips was, let's say there's two dogs on a leash. And so the tip was really to be very mindful of that not all dogs are, are socialized or some dogs are in training. And so it's very important to be very aware and really have that communication between the owners about, is it okay if my dog approaches your dog? Is it okay if my dog sniffs yours? You know, there could be other things that you may not know. It could create a confrontation if, if there's like that lack of communication. And so I thought that was just really, really informative. And I really appreciated that. Yeah, uh, those were perfect, perfect tips. And I love the way you said, just be mindful, be mindful and communicate with the person on the other end of the leash. And I want to add to that just a little bit about the retractable leashes. If you're the one holding the retractable leash, please, please, please don't let your dog just run out towards someone or towards another dog. It's really important to keep your dog 
in your space, in your personal space, unless you have permission from the other person. So I don't always want to put the responsibility on the person that's being approached. Let's keep the responsibility with our dogs, with our space. Like if I'm holding Smiley's leash, I'll have him in a sit stay. And then if someone wants to come up, Smiley stays in the sit stay, as does Ellie, as do the other demo dogs that State Farm works with. So so I even take it a little bit further. <laughs> but, and thank you. Thank you. And Josh, yes, you all as State Farm agents, you do have unique perspectives perspectives because you work with so many families that have dogs. So Josh, what have you observed or learned that you can share with us that you've learned from all of your people? Well, I would say that, you know, first and foremost, you had already talked about, you know, controlling your dog. And yes. I think that I've often seen, the most often time I've heard of a dog by claim or something of that nature was because the dog was around people that they weren't familiar with, you know, approached them in a way that maybe the dog felt was aggressive. So just being aware that your dog might not feel comfortable in certain social situations, understanding the limitations that you have with your dog, and making sure that you educate any guests that come to your home you know, about how to approach your dog or, or interact with your dog. That's probably the most important thing I can say. I love that. And again, it goes back to the very, very, very simple terms that Adriana said, just be mindful and communicate with the people. That's just so simple. And Linda, you work with children and dogs. You've worked with veterinarians and dogs. In working with kids, what is your advice for parents and for kids with dogs? What, what do you have to share with us? Well, and I do have to let you know, I have five rescue dogs myself. Love it. <laughs> um, one of the things, especially with children, they get so excited and they want to put their hands all over the dogs. And I yes. always tell them that they have to stop. While you put your dog in a sit stay, you almost have to tell the child to just stop for a moment and Absolutely. just gently put out the back of their hand for the dog to sniff them. Because when the children get too excited, then the dogs can be afraid. And that's when problems can happen. So it's just a matter of, of taking a moment, asking permission if they can pet the dog, and putting their, I always say the back of the hand out so the dog can smell them and before they you know, start to pet the dog or anything. That's really important. Oh, Linda, that is so important. And again, so well said. You, I'm so happy to have all of you on our show today. This is just such a great, great show with so much good information. And also with children, Linda, I found that after I have them slow down, exactly like you said, and have the dog in a sit-stay where everybody's calm, I actually direct them to pet Smiley on the rear end, on the back part, and not have their hands. Because little kids, their hands can be, you know, flitting all around, and they're all excited. So I just say, stroke him like this, and I get him to pet him on the back. And they do it, and then they understand. And also, if you have small toddlers that are just kind of, you know, toddlers, they don't really understand about, you know, restricting their movements. They can't. They're not that developed yet. So if they do get up towards Smiley's face, I cover his eyes. That's simply to protect him because little, little children are drawn to the shiny eyes and they will poke the dog right in the eye, not knowing that they can do damage or cause pain. So if a little tiny child does go up to your dog's head, first thing to do is cover their eyes and then gently direct the little child back towards the hindquarters. So so that's what we do. And let's what go on to... Thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's Christmas time. It's the holidays. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. And all of this, all of these holiday celebrations means holiday food, feasts, decorations, and much of this, even though it's joyful and beautiful, it can be really dangerous to dogs and cats. So let's start with Santa Paws, Linda. Linda, can you share one of your favorite pet safety tips that we should be on the lookout for during the holiday season? Oh, absolutely. You know, and because I worked with the children too, I yes. know a lot of families will make edible ornaments. It's oh. a big thing to have the child help make the ornaments and they make oh. them and they hang them on the tree. Wow. First of all, I don't suggest hanging them on the tree because they entice the dog to get in the tree and take down the ornaments. And especially if they're using toxic ingredients oh. such as cocoa in their ornaments, that is just a disaster waiting to happen. So I just suggest have fun, make cookies instead with your child, but don't hang edible ornaments on your tree when you've got pets. Oh, Linda, that is amazing. I did not even know about edible ornaments. So that's a new one to me. Yes. Let's just, let's just say that again. Don't hang edible ornaments on the tree. Okay. I love that. That's like a definite underline. Don't do that one. <laughs> Adriana, <laughs> do you have one of your favorite tips or a couple of things you want to share? 
Sure. So I would suggest making sure that if you celebrate Christmas and you go with your family to select a Christmas tree, that you make sure that it's anchored really securely yes, so that good. I know I have two little toddlers and so and that's going to be something really important to me. And I think with pets, I mean, I think it's easy if they, you know, it's something new in the home, so they might be curious and they might want to put their paw to it. And if it's not secure, it could tip over and cause some, some injury. So we definitely don't want that. So secure your tree properly. Absolutely. For dogs and children and for cats too, because sometimes the cats, the wild ones, they like to climb the tree or my kitty cat. I have what I call teenage kitty and this kitty cat is wild and she does flying leaps at the curtains and flying leaps at everything. So yes, let's <laughs> let's secure the tree. And Josh, I heard you, you giggle there a little bit. Do you have a holiday tip for our pet people out there? Yeah, you know, you were mentioning how the cat's flying around, and uh, I, <laughs> I grew up with cats, and that, that was always a problem for us at, at, yeah. uh, at Christmas time. But, you know, one thing that actually I learned from my dad, and kind of to piggyback on what Adriana was talking about, anchoring the Christmas tree, you know, one thing that we do is we just, uh, we take, you know, one of those hanging plant hooks, we insert it into the ceiling, and we I love a that. fishing mm-hmm. line and attach it to the top of the tree. And that way, you know, it's secure so that the, the tree won't tip. You know, it might move, but it won't tip over, especially if you have, you know, small animals. You want to make sure that they could get really hurt, especially if you have a large Christmas tree. Yeah, I um, want to second that 100%. Let me just say, I've done that many times, and you don't have to be like a professional handyman or a, a carpenter to do this. It's really, really simple. Just screw one of those little anchor things, like what you'd hang a lamp onto, into your ceiling with an anchor, and ask your hardware guy what you need, and then just tie it up there. It's really, really easy, and it is worth it. I love that. Do you have another one, Josh, or anything else? Did I interrupt you? Yeah, no, just the only other one that we're very careful about is, especially with popular holiday plants. Yes. Yes. Holly, those are, you know, very, very dangerous if animals ingest. So just make sure that if you have any holiday plants, that you keep them far away from where your pets can get to them because if they eat them, they can get very, very sick. Yeah, good tip. And that goes for the cats and the dogs. Those plants you mentioned are toxic to both species. And Heather, do you have any holiday tips for our pet people out there? Uh, you know I do. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely, you know, I always think of the holidays, you know, one of my absolute favorite pastimes, which is eating food and yeah. sweets and, you know, <laughs> Everybody and their mama is bringing in cookies and chocolate and all yeah. that kind of stuff to the office. And there, nobody wants to take it home. So, you know, one of us has to be the guinea pig and say, oh, oh gee, force me. I'll bring all the extra chocolate to my house. Right. You know that, that, that chocolate, especially baking chocolate, is toxic to dogs. It is so dangerous. Do not let your animals get into the food. From time to time, we like to give our dogs snacks and, and things like that off of our you know, dinner plates. If I give any snacks to my pets, it's carrots or green beans. Love it, uh, yeah. I try to give them you know, healthy snacks, definitely not anything like chicken bones, which no. can get stuck in their esophagus. Yeah no chocolate, be really, really careful about the treats and food that you have out because Accessible. A, yeah. all of that dog doesn't look at it and say, oh, I can't have that because, you know, that's going straight to my thighs. You know, that <laughs> dog is looking at it and going, this is like this something. Is a, yeah, <laughs> um, their eyes are rolling back. I want to try. Exactly. <laughs> and on the topic of that food, Heather, those are such good points. Raisins also are extremely toxic. Raisins, yes. just a few raisins can cause kidney failure in a dog. So I don't yep. even allow raisins in my house. And I used to eat raisins all the time because one raisin falls on the floor, the dog's going to eat it. So when you're dressing, if you're at home making your own dressing or whatever, just don't put raisins. You can put little dried cranberries or cut up oranges or tangerines and put those in there. And that adds that same sweetness. Just leave the raisins out of the house. So that's a good one. And then also, Heather, you talked about licking the plates with all of the juices in turkey or even chicken. You know, if you get all the greasy juice, that can cause a severe case of pancreatitis in your dog that can be very, yeah. very, very dangerous and also very expensive. So at the vet, so, you know, a lot of pain for your dog. So just don't let them lick the plates. If you want to give them treats, like you said, carrots, broccoli, rice with no butter in it. They'd love a little yeah. tiny plate of rice. Like some, if you cook turkey or chicken, just a little tiny bit of the, the not greasy, just for a little bit from the breast and they'll be totally happy. Right. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one other thing that people don't think about, especially people that really want to have a live Christmas tree versus a fake Christmas tree, Uh you know, a live Christmas tree requires that you put water into the base in order to keep it alive for a month. Do not let your pet drink out of that water. It can carry a lot of bacteria. Sometimes there's chemicals that go into that and it can Uh really be dangerous. Yeah. So don't let your pets drink out of the tree base water. Right. And I guess to prevent that, one thing that comes to mind is you could put sort of a st- sturdy little boxes or even just some little a little plywood sort of fence around it or even a chicken wire fence around it. I'm always, I'm like you, Heather, I grew up around horses on a farm. So I'm always, I can make anything out of anything. So, <laughs> so just, be creative, <laughs> just be creative and keep your dogs and kitty cats out of that water. And we were talking about the food, Heather, and the bones. And I think Adriana mentioned this as well. Your garbage cans in the house, make sure they have a lid that snaps shut or take the garbage out to the outside bin immediately. You don't want your dog eating the bones or tinfoil or anything, or raisins or anything like that. So any other advice you'll have? You know, I think for me, I always, in addition to getting, you know, gifts and things like that for my pet, for my child, he's basically 14, he's an animal still. Um, <laughs> you know, I definitely consider, you know, a great thing for your pet. Maybe they want a new dog bed. Uh, oh, you know, I love get a that. New toy. Yeah. Or even better, which is something that I do, which is in the name of each of my pets, I like to make a donation in their name shelter uh, oh, for Christmas. This, Heather. So Heather, my pets this. get to then help contribute to hopefully saving the life of somebody, another pet. I love that. And you know what? We could even do that in the name of our our doggies and kitties that are now at Rainbow Bridge. I like that. What a great memorial. Great tips, everybody. And we have more, more coming up after this break. And we're going to have the story about the super docile older house kitty that created a (laughs) life-threatening danger that could rival any bully dog breed. I know Heather's got that story right after this break. Smiley, can you wait? (laughs) Good boy. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. State Farm, this is Andrea. Yeah, what if I get into an accident in, say, Accident, Arkansas? Anywhere in the U.S., State Farm has you covered. Uh Uh-huh, and if I hit the only tree in Lone Pine, California? We'll send a tow truck right over. What if I get dinged in Denton? North Carolina or Texas? Uh, both. Then we'll send two trucks. Well played. State Farm handles more claims than any other company. Over 35,000 per day. Call 1-800-STATE-FARM and get to a better state. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, I'm Francis Fisher, and you are on a super smiley adventure. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with State Farm's Heather Paul. Josh Terrano, Adriana Galdamez, and Linda Newell. And today, during these holidays, we're sharing the messages of peace, joy, and the love given to us by the big doggies known as the bully breeds and including the pit bull. And Heather, you just adopted a pity and you're, you work very closely with Victoria Stilwell. You mentioned Ellie the pit bull on dog bite prevention, but you just got a pretty severe bite this weekend, only it's not what you all might think. Heather, tell us about it. <laughs> right. Well, yes, I did. I unfortunately had a senior dog that had to be euthanized several weeks ago to, to, due to her quality of life. I mean, it's always a hard decision, but, you know, our pug was really, really depressed. So we did go, I did go to the animal shelter. And after multiple visits, I ended up adopting a chocolate lab pit bull mix uh, named Jilly Bean. Aww. Jill is, uh, she's giving me hugs right now because I said her name, but she is an absolute fantastic pet. She's just wonderful. So when I introduced her to, I brought her home and I have two dogs and three cats and I made the whole, I made so many mistakes and you'd think that I would know better, but you know, in the excitement of everything, you forget. So I introduced Jilly Bean, walked her into the house 
and our cats were not happy with her. She did great with the cats. The cats, however, were not thrilled with her. And in the heat of the moment, my older cat, who's 13, Shushu, decided to jump up and scratch Jilly Bean's face. So yeah. without thinking, I grabbed Shushu to get her out of that situation, and she bit me on my pinky. That little bite, what I thought was a little bite, resulted in uh, my weekend stay this past weekend in the hospital, getting IV antibiotics for staph infection. And the so, possibility of your finger being amputated, right? I mean, this was amputated. very serious. Very yes. serious. For Megan's listeners, yeah, one of the first people that I told about this as I was in the hospital was Megan. (laughs) I'm like, you will not believe what just happened to me. (laughs) But, you know, cats have extremely dirty mouths, not not profanity, although I'm sure that there's plenty (laughs) of cats that if they could talk, it would be loaded with that. But they have so much bacteria, staph, strep, and MRSA, which is an antibiotic resistant staph. They have a lot of bacteria, and especially an older cat who has never bitten, is normally very calm, but was in a very stressful situation. And I made a stupid move of reaching down to try to get her out of a situation that I thought she was could be harmed or could harm a different dog. She bit me. Those fangs, when they go into the joint, is just a direct line of bacteria and basically horrible venom right smack into your joint. My hand was swollen within 24 hours. My entire hand, I couldn't move it, which was part of the concern that they might have to amputate my pinky because if it does get into the tendons and joint, it can do an immense amount of damage very quickly. So my caution to everyone, and this is a good tip also for the holidays, is it is yes. there's a lot of stressful situations going on. Right. So reduce that. Put your animals into a different room so that they're not stressed out. If your cat is upset, if your dog is upset, don't reach down because you know you could potentially get bitten and scratched. And if you do, go to the doctor right away to get antibiotics because it's alarming that you have a 50 percent chance of developing an infection from a cat bite. Yeah, the cat um, bites, they're, they're, they're very more, different. They are. And, and in fact, when I went into the ER, they told me that cat bites are the worst, human bites are second, and dog bites are third. There's more hospitalizations because of cat bite infections than by dog bites. That's amazing. Now, this is really good information. It's constructive information to know about and work with, but but we want everybody to know that we're all cat people here. Heather's got a kitty cat. I, I traveled with Toot Sweet the Travel Kitty, and he was my co-host on Animal Attractions TV. So we, we love our kitty cats. We're, the bottom line here, though, is that if they are in a stressful situation, like with guests, put them in a quiet room. Put them in a quiet space. And again, know your animal. If they're freaked out and you think they might lash out, just don't reach down and grab them, and everybody will be protected. And if you do get a cat bite, do go to the doctor. So Heather, we're so glad that you're okay. That's the bottom line here too, that we still have Heather with us. We're so happy that you're still with us, Heather, and that you can tell us this story, not only about dog bite prevention, but now you've added another, another topic to your repertoire and it's cat bite prevention. (laughs) So, (laughs) well, you know, it's also a good thing to keep in mind that even though I, I coordinate for State Farm, the national dog bite prevention campaigns and kindness to animal campaigns that we all make mistakes in the heat of the moment. And I'm the first one to say, oh my gosh, I made a mistake that almost cost me a digit on my hand. And, uh, you know, it happens frequently. It's not something that you can, you know, you may think it's a small bite, so I can just wash it off, put some peroxide and antibiotic cream and I'll be good. That wound is so small. It doesn't bleed a lot. It closes very quickly and it holds that bacteria in. Yeah, puncture wounds. Right, Uh, puncture wounds. Right, right. And Heather, thank you for sharing that with us. And, And Adriana, we're about to go. We're about out of time. If you could leave us with one thing that you've learned or one piece of advice, what would that be? I would just say love your animal like any of your family members. I think every tip that you guys shared is because of the love and the passion that you have for your dogs. And so I think that if you lead with that, that's going to create very uh, safe and happy memories for the holidays. I love that. Love. I love that. And Josh, what about you? What does Aria want to say or what do you want to leave us with? Well, I would just say, you know, again, to piggyback, be very mindful of your pets, especially during Love the that. holidays. Yeah. Take the precautions. It's so worth it. The last thing anybody wants to deal with is, you know, a sick dog or cat, you know, over those holidays. 
I like that. The word mindful. I love that. And Linda, you have so many things going on now. Um, what would you like to leave us with? <laughs> the only thing I want, I want to ask everyone first, please have a Merry Christmas from myself But also, if you have not gotten your pet microchipped, I'm mm-hmm. going to ask that people do so. So many love pets it. have lost, especially over the holidays. So please take that stuff and get the microchipped. I love that. I love that. Yes, yes, yes. Protect them. Protect them. And this season, we want to send out the message of joy, and we're all doing what we can. And and I just want to say, I watched the television special the other night, Racing Extinction. Did any of you see that? Any of y'all happen to see that? It was amazing. I did see that. It was amazing. Yep. And what I loved about it, and I think you're going to agree with this, Heather, is the positive message at the end that each of us can do one thing. Their hashtag is start with yeah. one thing. Did you love that? Didn't you love that, Heather? It was. It was actually very empowering because it's easy to watch a show empowering. like that and, and yeah. get down and you know and lose hope that we can save so many beautiful species of animals and to then just stop and think that there's a lot of people on this earth and if each one of us did one positive thing thing. for an animal one thing and it's an easy step to make think about the impact that that we can do and even when it comes to your community you know whether it's taking an hour of your day to volunteer to walk dogs at a shelter and show them that there are people that love them I think is it's one of the, the most gratifying things that I think anybody can ever experience. Absolutely. And I love that. Start with one thing. That's sort of been my mantra for the last week. And Super Smiley, I know you all know, like you all have been doing a few things, but the one thing that he wants to share today, well, actually, too, is his message of pet adoption and kindness. And he is sharing kindness around the world. Super Smiley is State Farm's kindness ambassador, canine kindness ambassador of kindness. And he's planting the seeds of kindness with his latest video, which is sponsored by State Farm. It's one of Smiley's. It's animated. He's flying through the air in his red cape sharing kindness mark winter wrote the song and we want to invite everybody to help share the seeds of kindness just by watching the video and sharing it and you can find it by googling super smiley kindness video or go to kindnessfilms.com so it's just a minute and a half everybody watch it and share kindness with us yay and heather i know that on the good neighbor site you all post good news and and all the things that you do for dogs so thank you to all of you at state farm for everything that you're doing and and heather where can people people go to find this good news and to keep up with State Farm and all the great things y'all are doing? They can definitely go to goodneighbors.com. They can also go to statefarm.com as we, we've got great stories. Of course, we were so completely thrilled to have Super Smiley as one of our canine ambassadors. <laughs> um, we couldn't Thank imagine you. a better ambassador for happiness <laughs> and kindness because that is exactly what both of you do. Oh, um, thank you, you show Heather. that positivity. And, and I think that it's, it's beautiful. And I hope that, you know, for the new year, for the holiday and for the new year, that people definitely get a chance to take a look at the videos that you've put out and the information you've put out and, you know, share some, some of the kindness that you guys have already started to spread. Oh, thank you so much, Heather. So, yes, everybody go to Good Neighbors at State Farm and Super Smiley and I are both on Facebook and Twitter. And all the links are at Megan Blake Official. So we would love to meet all of you and, you know, share all this great information and share the kindness and joy and before we go we want to say that without our amazing producer and the co-founder of pet life radio we would not be here so a huge super smiley shout out and thank you to mark winter our super producer and thank you again state farm for being our amazing dog loving national sponsor and thank you to state farms heather paul josh carano adriana galdamez and linda newell for joining us today thank you guys thank you Thank you, Megan. Thanks, Megan. (laughs) You're welcome. And from all of us here at Pet Life Radio on a Super Smiley Adventure, we hope you all love all your adventures with all your pets. And until next time, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and woof and super smiles. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.